everybody, welcome to the Let's Play. I'm back with Owen from Game of the Cooler. And today we're checking out The War of the Ring. Um, probably one of the least well-known and best written war games Games Workshop came out with in the last 20 years. This uh, game draws a lot from, I would say, historical miniature games um, to basically take your collection of Lord of the Rings miniatures from the original trilogy. Uh, this has no units from The Hobbit. This was before that. This is just all stuff from the War of the Ring. Um, and give you a tabletop battle using mass combat rules. So you get formations of troops, there's the ability to take allies, uh, and basically put together a sort of mass Pelennor Fields, bigger bigger battle. Um, so we're playing a 750 point game. The game typically was played between 1,500 and 2,000 points uh, back in the day, but this is using Owen's uh, Battle for Pelennor Fields box set. This is basically all he's got, yep. um, versus the little bit of Isengard I painted, and it's still a pretty cool looking game. Uh, to give you guys uh, sort of a, a, an idea of how it plays. So we're going to play through a Clash of Swords, uh, or no, Clash of Kings, which is the scenario where you're trying to kill heroes, you're hunting heroes, uh, with Lurtz and Theoden taken to the field. It never actually happened except for at Helm's Deep, but we're going to have some, some Isengard versus Rohan on the table here today uh, to show you this Games Workshop classic. So we'll show you the armies, we'll show you the first uh, sort of like turn as we sit, walk through the rules, and then we'll get this underway. So here's my 750 points of Isengard. Now, I'll go over the army construction rules. They're relatively simple. Uh, you have common, rare, and legendary formations in War of the Ring. Uh, you have to have at least one common company. So in this case, I took a unit of Isengard warriors here. I upgraded them to have a banner and a horn, or sorry, a drummer. And then you have to have a leader. And I took the legendary character, Lurtz. Lurtz is leading this assault on Rohan, as he would have if he wasn't slain by Aragorn. <laughs> uh, then I took um, a second unit of uh, Urkai warriors, and I swapped their shields for crossbows. I bought them a captain, which Vrasku is standing in there as. He's also got a legendary formation I could take, but I decided I was going to just use him as a captain today because I need to have at least one common formation for every rare formation I have. And I have two rare formations in my army. I have a rare unit of berserkers, um, who are 110 points because they're awesome and crazy and berserk. And I have an Isengard troll captain. Um, he's also rare. Uh, and being a captain means he can issue challenges and stuff too, which would be cool for hunting heroes. And then I have one legendary formation. I have Sharku's Wolf Riders, a single standard Wolf Riders here. Now, all you really need to convert your Lord of the Rings army into a War of the Ring army is movement trays. And I was lucky enough to have my buddy Austin over at Death Ray Designs whip some up with his laser cutter. So if anyone's looking for um, War of the Ring movement trays in the US, uh, Austin can now produce these. Just go to his website and I'll put a link in the video below. Um, and that's really it. So you have to have at least one common formation, at least one leader model, um, and then you have to have no more rare units than you have common units. So common units here are my warriors and my warriors of crossbows. Rare units are my um, Isengard troll cat chieftain and my berserkers over here. Uh, and then you have the uh, cavalry stand here, uh, my legendary formation, which is Sharku's Raiders. So uh, what's nice about this is um, it's just another way to play with the toy soldiers I already have. And as I add to this, of course, my Isengard Legion get bigger. Now, monsters don't need a movement tray. Uh, that also includes things like the Siege Engines. Um, the Battering Ram also has rules in this for the uruk uh, Any of the big flying monsters, the Mooma Kill, stuff like that, too. So you really just need the infantry, uh, which are always in stand of eights, and the cavalry, which are in stands of two, to be able to throw down some more of the ring. And here's Owen's Rohan, led, of course, by Theoden. In his first common formation are some uh, Riders of Rohan. I'll take it in just formations of stands of two here. Uh, cavalry in this game is great because striking order is all based on your class, infantry, cavalry, or monster. And cavalry strike before infantry, so they get to do tons of damage, especially when they charge. And you have some Oathsworn Militia here, some Rohir Militia with a uh, captain there, which is the foot Theoden, because you're never actually going to dismount in this game. You're either alive or you're dead when you're attached to a formation. Um, uh, he's just going to stand as a captain today, and then I'll have a, a horn blower as well. And then over here, uh, we have a unit of allies. So now allies can be no more than 25% of your total army cost, so for 750, that's just over 180 points, which is nice because this is a unit of Army of the Dead, uh, two companies of that with a captain, uh, and that means that one, two common formations, a rare ally, and then over here, another common formation of bowmen. So three common formations, uh, each of the units has a captain, so bowmen have a captain. Over here, there's a captain on the... Um, 
the unit of militia, and then of course the uh, the Theoden leading the, the Rohirrim charge, and a captain of course hanging out with the Army of the Dead. Setting up the game, standard sort of fantasy scenery will work. Um, the one thing I will note is that when you want to have a woods, you want to have it on a template, because instead of trying to maneuver around trees in this, you actually occupy it. So when your unit enters it, you move into the edge of it, you take everyone off and just stand them on it, and the tree stand actually becomes the unit. So very handy stuff at the table. So we're going to roll for priority. Got my old school Lord of the Rings priority counter here. Just like in Lord of the Rings, and I win, so I'll have priority, which means I get to choose side and then set up first. Uh, it also means that, uh, sorry, I get to choose side, you get to set up first, and you'll get to choose who has priority on turn one. We're playing battle lines, which means 12 inch deployments. Uh, there's uh, back and forth, and then we back after we deploy. We're deployed, so I've stretched out my battle line here a minute because I'm outnumbered. So I have my berserkers on the flank, my big unit of warriors with their command in the middle, my crossbow in behind my troll, and I'm flanking with Sharku and his raiders. Uh, Owen's gone for a brick in the middle. We got the warriors. We have the army of the dead right front and center with some uh, arrows behind them, and then the horsemen right up front. So the game term in uh, War of the Ring is a bit like an amalgamation between old Fort, sorry, current 40k and uh, the or, like actual Lord of the Rings strategy battle game thing. So there's a priority phase. Again, we roll off. See so has priority. If we tie the person that priority last turn has it this turn. Now because Owen deployed first, uh, he gets to have priority or choose who has priority in the first turn. You almost always in this game want to choose your opponent to have priority in the first turn because it's very unlikely we're going to charge and it forces them to maneuver first. Then you have the move phase. Both sides move their formations. One side that with priority moves and the other side moves. So it's not uh, I do everything, you do everything game. It's a lot like War of the Rings where you move, your opponent moves, you shoot, your opponent shoots. And then you charge, so there's actually a charge phase afterwards. So you can't move into contact during the move phase. And during the charge phase, your charge is based on your class. So infantry get D6 plus two, uh, monsters get D6 plus four, cavalry get D6 plus eight, I'm sorry, plus six, and flying monsters get D6 plus eight. If you roll a one, you stall, uh, which means you don't charge. You can, of course, expend might points from your captains to affect the roll. If you roll a six, you know, unstoppable charge, you get bonus attacks when you do so. Uh, and then there's the fight phase. Now fighting is interesting because it's, it's again, it's kind of an amalgamation between um, the Lord of the Rings or the SBG battle system uh, and uh, sort of a almost a Warhammer fantasy. There's no comparative to hit, you're actually just inflicting damage on each other and the speed is based on your class. So let's get sort of priority. You can choose who you want to have go first. So you can go first or second. I'll go second. You go second? Okay. So I'll go first. Now, Everything, of course, has a speed. Um, for Owen's cavalry, he's gonna move yeah, 10 inches and the infantry is all gonna move six. And of course, being spooky ghosts, move eight and ignore all terrain. Whereas all my infantry moves six, my cavalry moves 10 and my big trolley troll um, also moves six. It was eight, actually. A little bit faster than they are. So, <clears throat> I get to move first. And now when you move, there's no need to wheel or anything like that. Just the furthest point in the spearhead warband has to be inside of your movement value. So I'm just gonna move six straight ahead. Same with this lead generator. Whoop. Now my troll can move 360. He's gonna march out, and he's actually gonna march out this way. Eight. My Balzaco is gonna move and forward with these fellows. Now they have some special rules in combat and stuff. After we'll die to see what they do. They might, they might accidentally hit themselves. <laughs> and my crossbows are gonna move up. Now, just like in War, uh, Lord of the Rings, I can do heroic moves and heroic shoots and heroic combats. So you can expend might points to get to fight extra. These fellows are going to move up eight, and they have two inches left. So they're just going to pivot slightly, like so. Just going to get flanked. I move part of turn one is done, so it's over to you. Let's get them ghosts. Ghosties move up fast. Going up eight. That's right. Now, they have special rules such as spirit touch, where uh, they wound me on my courage instead of my defense. And, of course, they cause terror, but you can hard charge them. Big train of Behind. infantry moving up six. The archers moving up. Of course, they're not probably going to be able to see this turn. And the horses, they can go 10 as well. I'll move up eight first. And of course, my ca my infantry only charging D6 plus two. You can pre-measure everything. So you know my maximum charge is eight. So we'll go like an inch and a bit and be outside of eight. Okay, because you do charge D6 plus six. six. So you could potentially charge me right now. All right, movement done. On to the shooting phase. So the person with priority gets to shoot first. I suppose, of course, being crossbows can't move and fire. Uh, my archers over here could if they could see through the woods, but the woods are a template and block line of sight, so no shooting for them. Now, you've got uh, a unit of uh, warriors, of course, who can move and fire. So of a 24-inch range and strength of two, you're in half range. So first, you declare a target. 
I will shoot the, uh, the Warriors. The Warriors. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Now, if you can destroy a whole company of these guys, they'll be driven back D3 inches. The odds are pretty slim. The odds are pretty slim. So you're going to have a shot per model in the formations shooting that can see me. So that's two, four for these two. But you get supporting uh, shots from the ranks in behind. So that's five, six total. Now your strength is two. My defense is six. I think you need a six and a four. Six is actually. Take that six. Okay. Not now done, we go to the charge phase. Now I have priority, so I could attempt to charge first. Of course, Owen has cunningly put himself outside inch eight inches, so there's no way for me to charge here. Uh, so I have no charges. Would you like to try and charge with your yeah, Rohirrim? Yeah, we're, we're going to do it. Going deep? Yeah, I'm going to All right. Get him swords, of course. <laughs> so you get plus six, so you need a three plus to make this charge. Yeah. There you go, and you get an unstoppable charge. So Thaden being the spearhead, he'll go in first. You have a grand total, of course, of uh, 12 inches to move here, which is lots of space. And then everyone else is going to move in as well. Because you rolled so well, these companies are within 12 inches, which means you can change out two of these companies, and then these companies can become supporting companies in the rear. And you try and keep it to the middle if you can. There you go, you can change formation based on how far you rolled. So now if you'd only rolled like a three or a two, they wouldn't have had the room to do it. That's right, they would have had to stay where they were. But you can now spread out and attack near the cavalry charge. Wanna try and charge? Nah, they, they can't go far. No, all right, <laughs> they're the second wave apparently. Uh, all right, so now we have our combat. So what's gonna happen is, um, we have to divide the combat up into uh, who attacks when. So it's gonna be infantry last, then cavalry, then monsters. No monsters involved, the cavalry get to go first. Now normally cavalry only get two attacks. They have as many attacks as they have riders, but on the charge, they get plus six attacks per stand <laughs> against oh infantry. So you have eight 32 attacks, you charge, so 33, 34, 35, 36, and you have two supporting companies, 37, 38. Now the difference in our fight values also gets added, and Theoden has a special rule, everyone in his formation gets to use his fight value, not just him. So typically these are fight value three, which means they wouldn't get a bonus dice against fight value four. Or four. Are you four base neat? Okay, sorry. Yeah. I'm thinking of Lord of the Rings. Um, so you still wouldn't get a, a bonus fight value there. But because he's five, each of those companies will get one extra one. So you get 40 attacks. Sweet. And you basically, when you do an attack in this, there's no rolling a hit, it's just a straight roll to wound. So strength three against defense six, you need sixes to hit. In the fight phase, either one of us could expend might to initiate a heroic duel. Would you like to do so? I, I, I have priority, sorry. No, you don't have priority, so you have to decide if you want to duel first or not. No, I'm good. Okay, I am going to initiate a heroic duel. So we're going to, Theoden and, and Lurtz are going to fight. Suspicion my guys are going to get obliterated, but at least Theoden's going to, going to have to fight Lurtz, because the whole point of this is to try and fight bosses. So we'll do the duel first. Now when you initiate a duel, both sides roll a d6. Roll d6 and add our fight values here. You get a six. one, okay. Uh, I get a three, four because I initiated the challenge, plus six is 10. So a difference of four, that's a success. The hero lands a blow upon his foe, and you take an automatic hit. So with that massive a swing, Owen's decided he's gonna spend some might points to try and make it closer. So instead of being four different, you blow all your might and go to nine. Yeah. So only be difference of one then. So only I get to make one roll on this table. Because if I'm making four rolls on the dual table, it's a very good chance they didn't dies and the unit gets very badly damaged before the fight starts. Yeah. So I make one roll. Um, on a one, nothing happens. On a two, three, the unit takes D3 hits. On a four, the character takes a hit. And on a uh, five, sorry, on a six, I do a rampage where I do D3 hits to both and potentially kill them. So let's see what I get. I got a four. So Thaden takes a hit, but he's resistance two, which means he just shrugs it off and he's fine. Try by alerts, but now we're gonna take 40 attacks from cavalry. It's gonna be bad. For sixes. Uh oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, again. Seven. Seven. Oh, so wow. there's still there's still someone left in that company. I get to fight back now. I'm only gonna get one attack from this stand. <laughs> and at the end of the round, any units that are below half, any formations that are below half, get removed, which is bad. Now I'm fight six, so I get eight attacks from my intact stand. One attack for the survivor in this stand over here. Uh, his fight value is six, so plus one, because everyone's fight value five, because Thaden's alive. And I didn't charge, so I get this many attacks. Now I'm strength four against defense five. Fives should wound you here. Each cavalryman's resistance two, so for every two hits I do, I get to remove one of your riders or Rohan. So let's see what kind of damage we do here. <laughs> Zero. Oh. So time to roll for panic. I roll d6. 
and I get a six, which means steadfast. The warriors dig in their heels and refuse to come to panic. The formation holds fast and suffers no ill effects. And I actually forgot something. Because you got a huge charge, you actually had D3 extra attacks for each one, each one of these units, not just the one for charging. So I roll 43. And we'll just subtract one because we gave you the one for charging each time. So these are nothing, and these are one, two, three more dice. See if you get any more sixes to finish that guy off. No, he's fine. Cavalry have a special rule called Earth Shaking Charge. The end of a fight that they're resolved in, they roll a die. If they roll a six, they immediately get to charge and fight again. Ah! No. no. That was steadfast. The units then separated an inch, and that is new turn. So we're on to turn two. For priority, let's see who's going first. Five. Four. You have priority, sir. Would you like to go first? Yeah. Okay. Makes the sense. Do it. We got spooky ghosts. Let's do it. Now, can't touch that. Can't touch that. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Worth noting, the berserkers are the worst thing for you to fight because their courage is bananas. It's scary though. I might not be able to charge you. Uh, and these guys are headed. Hmm. If there's any, you can move any direction you want, of course, as long as Re you stay inside. Reform the line. There you go. <laughs> you can move any direction. The line is now reformed. Getting ready to charge again. Spin the archer slightly. Yep. Yeah. And these guys are going to just move a little bit and reform to some degree. I guess they actually just have to walk like that. They can move through companies in their own formation freely. Oh, okay. During their move. And these guys will just move up behind. Looks good. Movement is now done, so it's over to me. Uh, well, we're going to force the issue with the Berserkers, because why not? Strike at the same time. They'll sit still. These folk are going to move six, which means the maximum this corner can go to is here, like this. And then we're going to move over here. Finally, these guys will move up there 10. And two more, like so. And just max move to there. All right, so shooting phase, you get to shoot first. Alright, six more shots. Try and finish off this last Urkai. Might as well. Okay. Yeah. Hit on sixes? Yeah. You do. And he's down. So that company is destroyed. Now, a complete company was destroyed by shooting, so I am driven back. One inch. So I get pushed back an inch. As we didn't like watching those guys die. Shooting to me now, so we have some crossbows. We're going to fire a volley into your cavalry. Eight shots hitting on fives, because it's strength four for crossbows. So fives between those cavs, resistance two. Uh, we get not enough. But I'm thinking I might spend a might point from my captain to make that a five and kill a cavalryman. I have two bow shots from these fellas. They're expert riders into the side of your warriors, and they won't hit at all. Shooting is done. It's on a charging. We'd like to charge first. Horse is going to go in again. Yep. They did pretty good as last time. So D6 plus yeah. six, no. eight. He did make it. So he did make it. Now, will you close the door on me kind of thing? Well, your spearhead unit's going to be thin, because he's your leader. So he has oh. to go first. So you can do that. Yep. Corner to corner. Mm -hmm. And then these guys can corner off of him. That's that right. Way. So his maximum will be eight. There you go. So the best he can do... He'll close the door. ...is like get that. himself like that. Yeah, and then he closes the door. That's fine. That's free. Even if it doesn't meet? No, that's fine. It goes like this. Whoop. And then your friends come in line next to him. And everybody can move a maximum of eight, which means they're going to maintain their current form. Oh, so this guy can't make it then. No, because he, he makes it to touch him and then slides in. Oh, they, they, all, they, all, they all wheeled him to a line, basically. Oop. Riders. And then... Spooky Ghosts. Go in. Yeah, man. Don't well. roll a one. We'll get the benefit. Get a two. Didn't roll a one. In they go. Line of sight for the Cav. Uh, and that means it's time for me to charge. All right, let's start with this fellow. Gonna try and charge them. Gets a one. Uh-oh, good thing he's a chieftain. He'll might that to a two. He has two might. All right, and then uh, we're going to charge with the cavalry at plus six. And they get a ten, which means they will flank charge into this unit. Try and do some damage. All are fighting. I could charge with these guys. I'm tempted to. Yeah, I think we will. They're still Uruk high. We're going to charge them into here. We're going to try and charge them as well. They go in. They go two, which will give them a total of six. Four. Which should make it. Oh, it's a straight four. Oof, they won't make it then. That's three? Yeah, no way. You pick the combat to do first, as you have priority. Which one do you want to do? Let's get them, horses. All right, well, uh, we're going to do... Do you want to heroic challenge? I have might left. I have three might left. I think we're going to fight another heroic challenge. Fine. What happens if I decline? You lose all your benefits for being in the unit. Oh, well, no. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> all right, so challenge D6. 
Six is Whoa. nine, eleven. Uh, six, eleven. Okay, I got a four, ten, eleven because I issued the challenge, so we just draw. Could spend a might point to make it a twelve, but then I only have one might point left. I'm gonna do it and make it a twelve just to get just to get a roll. See what I get. I get. Four, which is just a hit on you, which you discard. Another fight actually ensues. It's gonna go monster, then cavalry, then infantry. So my, my Urukai will strike last, but the Isengard troll will strike first. Now he uh, has a extra dice for charging. He has three base attacks. Your fight is five minus seven, so I get the difference there, so two more. Uh, and that's it. So I have a grand total of six dice to roll. Your defense five against my strength of seven. So I need threes to wound. Oh, and we do terribly. One. <laughs> One and your resistance two. Do I spend my last might to point to kill a guy? Oh, uh, it's so bad. Nah, yeah, we will. We'll spend my last might point just to kill that last rider. So one of those companies comes off. Um, and that's your riders. You're going to get eight 16 attacks, 17, 18 because of the fight differential, uh, 19, 20 for the two supporting units. Uh, you could choose to fight to the side, but of course you'd be at quite a disadvantage. So you're probably better off just trying to obliterate Lurtz's unit. Let's get him. Roll those sixes. Need some sixes to hit. Now if you kill four, my art my is gonna get removed at the end of this because we are the last uh, company standing here. And you got two. two. So you're gonna kill two Urukai. And we're still above half. We have to fight back. Uh, Alerts and friends have six dice now. No bonus, actually sorry, plus two bonus for, oh, you don't have fight differential. That's right, because I'm fight six in this last unit. Uh, it doesn't matter. You didn't You didn't get that many. So I have plus one for my fight differential, which makes me seven. So I'm fight six on Alerts' formation. Hitting on fives, and we get two. So we do manage to kill Ryder. At the end of it all, you've managed to kill two. I've also managed to kill two, so it's a drawn fight, which means we just get pushed back. So the Berserkers have to roll a die. On a one, they take d6 hits against themselves at strength plus two. On a two to five, I get plus two attacks. And on a six, I get plus four attacks. Sorry, my strength is increased by two. And then Carnage and Valiant strength plus four if I roll a six. Let's see what we do. Come on, Berserkers. Yeah, strength plus four. So you have eight attacks, nine because you charged, 10 because you have a supporting formation, and you wounded my courage. Now, of course, the Berserkers are courage five because they're, they're crazy. So you have a... Uh, Strength three. Strength three, so five to wound. Looks like three. Now, Berserkers also have Stalwart. They are not removed until the last guy dies, as opposed to having to go to half to be destroyed in the last formation. So let's look at the fight. And of course, because we go at the same time, because we're both infantry, everyone's going to strike. Now, I'm strength 10, uh, meaning I think I still wound on three. Attacks it on threes. And I only get four. Not enough. So four leaders break. Oh, sorry, what's your fight value? I might have an extra die here. Extra from being fight five. Another guy. So five guys. You have to win the fight, which means I think you need to make a test on your courage. Roll d6. Three. Three. So you are disordered. You have to make a courage test. So 2d6 plus your courage, which will be six. And you pass, so you don't take any casualties. Otherwise, you take the differential in additional, ca additional hits. Yeah. And then we end. Get pushed back. And uh, over here I charged, so cavalry of course going before infantry. So I have two attacks normally, plus six, because I'm charging into little dudes. Three against, I believe, defense five. So hitting on fives. Managed to kill three folks in one of the formations. You get to fight back, and that's going to be at minus three when you fight to the side. So it'll be uh, two attacks from this formation, because the rear formation only takes the casualties, and then uh, five attacks from this formation. Now I'm only fight four, I believe, so you get your differential for your captain, so plus one for his unit. Um, and then I believe your strength three. Yep. Defense four, I believe, so five to wound. One, one two. two, that's enough to kill one of the riders. You could do that, but the thing is that I'm below half now, which means my unit explodes the end of the round anyway. So you don't need to expend your might to kill me if my, it's my yeah. last. Yeah. It's low. It, it uh, okay, it at, it, at half. It's 50%, I just go away at the end of all this. Oh, okay. Make my test and see what happens. Uh, I pass, or sorry, I make my courage test, uh, which is seven. I barely pass, uh, but because all is lost, I'm dead in my half. I took just of too many. Base, That's right, right, of the last base, then he goes away. So it's it's only formations that are the final formation any unit, and these guys have a special a rule that accepts. Turn three initiative. Come on, lords, you gotta kill Thad in this challenge. It's your last chance. Two. Four, it's gonna be me. Well, we're just going to advance, I think, slightly. How brave is your troll? He's pretty brave. Slide sideways, we're gonna slide sideways. 
So you can't hopefully outrun us. We move over to here so you can't fit through anybody else. On over to you. Okay, spooky ghosts are gonna garrison the forest. <laughs> move into the forest. So they can just As you do. walk off of this basically. I'm just gonna put yep. put a base in there to represent them. Big T, you got no might left. These little guys are gonna gonna do do Pump one of these. To the back. Yeah. Might not be able to get away from the berserkers. I don't think you can. Move back. Two inch movement trays. Yep. Just gonna go fight the troll or fight these guys by yourself. Yeah. And I have these little guys. Yep. Gonna move out. Uh, they can only move three and shoot though. That's right. So they're basically gonna stay within that three, and and be obnoxious. All right, charge a clock. Here come the berserkers. Oh, I'll shoot you. Oh, that's right, shooting phase. Uh, well then, let's do some shooting. Uh, I get to shoot first because I have priority. So we're gonna shoot into the woods. Six in the woods, but strength four doesn't care. So still on fives. I managed to kill one more. Trey's got two left, and that's all my shooting. So it's back to you. Uh, Expert rider lets you move full and shoot with your <laughs> formations of um, these guys. Six arrows into them. Okay, on sixes, defense six. Even the even the naked even berserkers. the even the naked berserkers. Not a okay. one. None. So they Strength move, two. But they get eight shots because yeah. there's lots of them. You got it. And we'll shoot at these guys. Looking for sixes as well. Get one. <coughs> All right, looking depleted. So let's do some let's do some charges. Uh, we're gonna charge. Well, charge the thins. Yeah, why not? Let's go. Come on, berserkers. Four. So that's going to be a grand total of eight. Sorry, six rather. Yeah. So it's more than enough to make it. Mm -hmm. So we'll go to here, we have to try and maximize. Eight, so I can't do this one, but I get plus four for him, so I might be able to. You're looking for an 11. No, nope, can't do it. One of the things we forgot is that once you're within six of the enemy, you move at half speed, <laughs> which would have been important for these guys sallying back. Not a big deal though. We'll remember it for future turns. Yep. Um, so of course these guys garrisoning cannot charge out. They won't voluntarily leave it. They have to walk out during a further turn uh, in order to charge later on. Um, and so I think we are into the fighting time. So you get to, charge, you get to fight first because you are uh, cavalry. I got to roll to see what my berserkers do. One! Oh no! So they're going to attack themselves. Three times. Five times at strength I plus two. No. 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 So uh, winning on threes. Great job. Oh good. We killed we killed everyone but one. You're all good when I attack myself. <laughs> That's for Berserk. Uh, so you've got two attacks per stand now. Um, of course, you being cavalry, you get to attack first. And those attacks are going to be resolved at um, the five. same time as me, basically. Six attacks, looking for sixes to wound. Not a one. My last guy stays in fights. Uh, pan test. We're going to have to roll. And we pass with an eight. So we just keep fighting. Can push back. All right. Uh, turn four priority. Let's see who's going first. It's Ooh. you. Just make me go first if you want. You can go first. Okay. No, why would I do that? I don't know why you. I don't know why you would do that. Yeah. All right, let's go, boys. <laughs> We're coming out of the spooky woods. Okay. And we move eight. So, oh, hi. Hello, archers. We're gonna we're gonna sit like this. We can't get out of your front, but we'll be we'll be here. You're gonna move sideways. Yep. Being able to still shoot, and these guys can only move five. Not not ten. No, not ten. <laughs> not ten. And these guys can only move four, actually, because these guys are nearby. Oh, it doesn't matter that they're coming out of nope. the garrison? No, they only move four. I think that should be four, right? Mm, that's the, that's four to there. Are two inches across. No, the cavalry ones are. Oh, I see. Which means you have to be side by side if you want to do it. You can't be inside oh. of it. Yeah. Okay. There you go. I don't know. There you are. The mulligan, and then these guys will do kind of this, and then this. Continue formation. Yeah. Cool. Make our make our line a little longer. Sounds good. Well, we're gonna move through with this guy. Just move back to here. Troy's gonna go six or eight, sorry. Whoa, walk up. Besides the there. Mm -hmm. And then these folk will move in behind. Sit still, because they want to be able to shoot. And I think it's guns o'clock. You get to go first. All right, let's finish them off. We got more bows this time. <laughs> Eight shots. Eight shots, right? Two supporting companies. God. Try and finish him. Well, last of you guys didn't. Yeah. Did you it. got him? Yeah, I just made, make sure everyone's in line of fire. Yeah, you're fine. Everybody can see him. So he's dead. Here's from them. Take four. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, Lurch is alive. 
That'll be bad for Lurtz at the end of this. So he's he's not destroyed, but at the end of the fight phase, he's gonna get get ruckused. Uh, so it's time to use some charges. You, or try to shoot back. Shoot these guys first. Riders, eight shots. Because we want you to be this wide. So you have charges in the front. <laughs> uh, looks like three. One, two, three. So actually, only one rider because he's resistance two. Lose a company, so they get driven back D three. Do they bounce you just bump your friend? Yeah, you bump your friend. Wow. Boop. Hey. Let's get on spooky ghosts. Go for Charging it. The, them. Yep, makes sense. No, disorder, they fail charge. I'm gonna use my might to make it two. Uh, I think I need to make it a three. Because it's a four inch charge. Oh no. Uh, you four. get plus two, so that's a four inch charge, yeah. So it'll hit. Make it. Yeah, you'll be fine. Alright, cool. Whoop, and you one. Oh, come on, you control terror test. Get him, Faden. Brave. Not brave. Six, he just barely passes. Yeah! Get him, Faden. Right, uh, Not a failure. Six. Eight, eight yeah. You make it. Ranking up so that two formations touch, and then you get two supporting formations is probably your best bet there. Back to you. Charge alerts. Don't get him, buddy. <laughs> All right, start of the combat. Which one are we doing first? You have priority. I want to use the ghosts. Okay, this go is, get them. This is show. Now, I'm courage bad now. Charging? Yep. Uh, 10, 11, 12, and your fight's three, so no, or your fight's four, so no difference. So 12 dice, we on fours, because I'm only courage three against your strength of three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, down to two, just Raskin front. Right, let's see if I fail my test. Oh, I have to fight back, sorry, with two attacks. No, eight attacks, what am I talking about? Everybody fights. Everybody fights, nobody quits. Uh, and for my hero is fight five, so I should get a bonus dice. So that was two misses, and then one, two, three, four, five, six. Should be this many. Uh, one, two, it's gonna kill last formation. And what happens, because I lost the fight, four. Uh, I have to make a leash test at Courage three. I'm fine, keep fighting, but it doesn't matter because that was my half my unit remaining, so I get wiped out. That's a hero kill for you. All right, spending my last might point. My troll's gonna issue challenge. Challenge, fight the troll, I'm Faden. Do it, yeah, let's go. <laughs> I got one epic ability per turn, so. You do, let's go. Oh no! Yeah, so you get 11, I got an 8 and 9, you get 2 rolls on the table against my troll. Time to die, troll. Oh, 6, sorry, 5 and a 1. That's one hit, and the other one's discounted, so I'm resistance 2, take no damage. It was over, so I strike first. Uh, I have a troll who has 3 attacks, he's fight 7 to your fight 5, mm -hmm. so that's going to be plus 2. Uh, and he's strength 7, so he's winning on 3s. That's 3 dead, so it's just 1 rider. And then you go first. Operation kill the troll. <laughs> Just kill Lurtz. You get four victory points for Lurtz because he's my general. You don't need to kill Lurtz. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, don't go for the, don't okay. go for the troll. Sounds good. Uh, so it's uh, two normally plus six for charging. You just have to do one hit. Plus one for the support. And I'm fight five to your fight six. Yep. It's just no bonuses. Just roll sixes. Roll one six. Nope. <laughs> I'm back. I do a hit. Doesn't just get bounced. Discount. Oh, and then the same thing against the uh, troll. That's right, on sixes. Every two will be an injury roll. Looking for sixes. Nope. All right, so this guy's just wiped out because he's below half. And that means he got my general for four. Uh, I don't have to make a morale test here because I didn't lose, I don't think. I you did lose. Uh, you have to roll a courage test a and you pass. You're fine. And going into turn five, all I have left is my troll, and you've killed uh, my general for four victory points, and then two captains for five, six. I've killed nobody. It's real so, good when so you can double your movement no it's matter what. Si <laughs> <laughs> and it's six. Wow. The, move, the moving away was a big deal. Mike totally flubbing on my three plus attacks and with the troll the and the berserkers. Nothing. <laughs> that, that was, was pretty bad. bad. Stories exploding themselves. But them's the breaks when you're evil. Troll goes home and tells stories at Troll Town. We got him. You got, you got me? Wow. So with the troll, he's very hard to kill. You have to basically have to kill him three times. He accrues wound markers as he uh, gets damaged. So there we go, end of the game, a true thumping for Isengard. Elite armies in low points in this game don't do very well. And also, I couldn't roll threes. Also, <laughs> double movements. Double movements, yeah, being able to move back is really good. Not, not being able to trap you. Yeah, I couldn't counterattack yeah. you. There was a turn I should have been able to charge you where it was, it was quite different because I had priority. Yeah. And losing priority with cavalry, as you can see, is terrifying because you drop an attacks basically to a quarter. Yes. So they're really good on the charge, not so great off the charge. And of course, they can move and fire, which is handy for you too. So the turns that you do want to 
get away and shoot. You can you can still do something during your turn basically by firing bows and arrows. So that's War of the Ring. Of course, the game scales really well, so it does a lot better when you've got big movement kills on the table and a yeah. uh, great beast of Gargaroth and winged fell beasts and stuff like that too. Um, so as I basically expand my Isengard, we'll play more of this. I have a huge dwarf army for this. My um, my Erebor army is is was my War of the Ring army when I was playing War of the Ring when it first came out. So I have like. Probably 3,000 points. As my evil team. Because I was going to do They're a good fun. and a bad one. And so we'll do like Easterlings with Kamul. Yep. And then good guys. And they get, they get Cataphracty. And you can well, and you can ally and everything. So like if yeah. you want to get well, Mumakil, you can. The guy, they get, they yeah. get Mumakil's. Yeah. And Mumakil is, Mumakil is basically designed to be exactly a, a, enough that you can fit him as an ally and a bad guy army. I think he's 500 points exactly. Yeah. So 2,000 points, you can just like slot him right in. And of course, there's other big I things too. in their faction. No, he's in. He's no, he's in Harad. He's in Far Harad. Yeah, Far Harad. Yeah. Actually, the, the the armies of the East might be one faction. In this I can't quite remember. Oh. They might the con the con Harad and the East Wings might actually just be one, a single faction right here. You, well, you could look, look for. <laughs> we'll save it for later. So I hope you enjoyed that throwback Thursday Let's Play. This is a great game. Um, if you can get yourselves a copy of it, and you have a Lord of the Rings army. You're basically ready to play. And of course, I'll link below for Austin's uh, handy movement trays for this. I think they're available from TT Combat. I mean, to be in the fair, UK, you can use these in anything that uses a 25 minute. Absolutely, yeah. So you can use this for. For, for basically anything, any same game. 40k. Just saying. Could, yeah, absolutely. You want some 40k movement trays. Or orc army that, that needs know, this, that may need this. I'm not thinking about it, the fact that I just painted another 50 shooters. <laughs> like, and it needs trays. They can, they can move around real fast. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that. We'll see you for more Let's Plays in the future. Till next time, I'm Ashes Owen. Have a great I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to so get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Death Ray Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.